Nguyen Chia. Nguyen Chia, born Lao Kim Lorne, July 7, 1926 to August 4, 2019, also known as Long Banruat or Rungluat Laudi, was a Cambodian communist politician and revolutionary who was the chief ideologist of the Khmer Rouge. He also briefly served as acting prime minister of Democratic Kampuchea. He was commonly known as Brother No. 2, as he was second in command to Khmer Rouge leader Pol Pot, General Secretary of the party, during the Cambodian genocide of 1975 to 1979. In 2014, Nguyen Chia received a life sentence for crimes against humanity, alongside another top-tier Khmer Rouge leader, Hugh Sam Phan, and a further trial convicted him of genocide in 2018. These life sentences were merged into a single life sentence by the trial chamber on November 16, 2018. He died while serving his sentence in 2019. Early Life Nguyen Chia was born as Lao Kim Lorne at Vote Corps, Badambang on July 7, 1926. Nguyen's father, Lao Liv, worked as a trader as well as a corn farmer, while his mother, Dos Pin, was a tailor. An interview by a Japanese researcher in 2003 with Nguyen Chia quoted that Liv was Chinese, while Pin was the daughter of a Chinese immigrant from Shantou, Guangdong, and his Khmer wife. In 2011, however, Chia told the Khmer Rouge Tribunal that he was only a quarter Chinese through his half-Chinese father. As a child, Nguyen Chia was raised in both Chinese and Khmer customs. The family prayed at a Theravada Buddhist temple, but observed Chinese religious customs during the Lunar New Year and Qiming Festival. Nguyen Chia started school at seven and was educated in Thai, French, and Khmer. In the 1940s, Nguyen Chia studied at what Bencham Abafit School and Faculty of Law, Thammasat University in Bangkok, and worked part-time for the Thai Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He began his political activities in the Communist Party of Siam in Bangkok. He was elected Deputy General Secretary of the Workers' Party of Kampuchea, later renamed as the Communist Party of Kampuchea, in September 1960. In Democratic Kampuchea, he was generally known as Brother No. 2. Unlike most of the leaders of the Khmer Rouge, Chia was not educated in France. As documented in the Soviet archives, Nguyen Chia played a major role in negotiating the North Vietnamese invasion of Cambodia in 1970 with the intent of forcing the collapse of Lan Nol's government in April, May 1970. Many North Vietnamese forces entered Cambodia in response to the call for help address to Vietnam not by Pol Pot, but by his deputy Nguyen Chia. Nguyen Ko Thach recalls, Nguyen Chia has asked for help and we have liberated five provinces of Cambodia in 10 days. In 1970, in fact, Vietnamese forces occupied almost a quarter of the territory of Cambodia and the zone of communist control grew several times as power in the so-called liberated regions was given to the CPK, Khmer Rouge. At that time, relations between Pol Pot and the North Vietnamese leaders were especially warm. The North Vietnamese trusted Nguyen Chia more than Pol Pot or Aung Sari, although Chia consistently and consciously deceived the Vietnamese principles concerning the real plans of the Khmer leadership. As a result, Hanoi did not undertake any action to change the power pattern within the top ranks of the Communist Party to their own benefit. Career as the recently proclaimed state legislature, the Kampuchean People's Representative Assembly held its first plenary session during 11 to 13 April 1976, Chia was elected president of its standing committee. He briefly held office as acting prime minister when Pol Pot resigned for one month, citing health reasons. According to Dmitry Mosyakov, in October 1978, Hanoi still believed that there were two prominent party figures in Phnom Penh who sympathized with Vietnam, Nguyen Chia, and the former first secretary of the Eastern Zone, So Phim. Vietnamese hopes that these figures would head an uprising against Pol Pot turned out to be groundless, So Phim perished during the revolt in June 1978, while Nguyen Chia, as it is known, turned out to be one of the most devoted followers of Pol Pot, he did not defect to the Vietnamese side. It is difficult to understand why until the end of 1978 it was believed in Hanoi that Nguyen Chia was their man. 
in spite of the fact that all previous experience should have proved quite the contrary. Was Hanoi unaware of his permanent siding with Pol Pot, his demands that the Vietnamese minority should not be allowed to reside in Kampuchea, his extreme cruelty, as well as of the fact that, in comparison with Nguyen Chia, people considered Pol Pot a paragon of kindness. Nguyen Chia was forced to abandon his position as president of the assembly, along with all others as the Vietnamese captured Phnom Penh in January 1979. According to prison commander King Kek Eve, more commonly known as Dutch, who described Chia as the principal man for the killings, Chia ordered me to kill all the remaining prisoners at Tol Slang shortly before the regime's ouster. Chia was reportedly furious that Dutch failed to destroy Tol Slang's extensive archives documenting torture and mass murder at the prison before the Vietnamese took the site. In December 1998, Chia surrendered as part of the last remnants of Khmer Rouge resistance, which was based in Palin near the Thailand border. The government under Prime Minister Hun Sen, himself a former member of the Khmer Rouge, agreed to forsake attempts to prosecute Chia, a decision that was condemned by Western nations. American journalist Nate Thayer, the last person to interview Pol Pot, describes Nguyen Chia as probably more guilty than Pol Pot himself for the actual killings that went on while the Khmer Rouge were in power. Arrest and Trial Chia on trial at the Khmer Rouge Tribunal, December 5, 2011 Extraordinary Chambers in the Courts of Cambodia, ECC, finds Nguyen Chia and Q Sam Phan guilty and gives them both life sentences for crimes against humanity. On September 19, 2007, 81-year-old Chia was arrested at his home in Palin and flown to the Khmer Rouge Tribunal in Phnom Penh, which charged him with war crimes and crimes against humanity. He was held continuously in detention after his arrest. In February 2008, Chia told the court that his case should be handled according to international standards. He argued that the court should delay proceedings because his Dutch lawyer, Mikhail Pestman, had not yet arrived. In May 2013, Chia told the court and the victim's families, I feel remorseful for the crimes that were committed intentionally or unintentionally, whether or not I had known about it or not known about it. On August 7, 2014, the court convicted Chia of crimes against humanity and sentenced him to imprisonment for the remainder of his life. His lawyer immediately announced that Chia would appeal against his conviction. Chia faced a separate trial for the crime of genocide in the same court. The court found him and Q Sam Phan guilty of genocide against the Vietnamese people and the CAMS on November 16, 2018. These life sentences were merged into a single life sentence by the trial chamber on November 16, 2018. In his closing brief before the court, numbering some 500 pages, Chia, blamed Vietnamese agents for virtually everything that went wrong during Khmer Rouge rule. He also denied responsibility for mass killings, but this was contradicted by detailed documentation left behind by the Khmer Rouge regime itself, including bizarre confessions. Extracted under torture at Tol Slang and photographs of purge victims, as well as a recording made by a Cambodian journalist prior to Chia's 2007 arrest in which Chia admitted, believe me, if these traitors were alive, the Khmers as a people would have been finished. If we had shown mercy to these people, the nation would have been lost. Don't forget to like and subscribe channel Longary Folded Hands. Thank you for watching.